Well, this is Pastor Zach Kelly. He's a middle school pastor, and we're so thankful that his bun, hair bun is gone. He looks so much better. And so bless you, Pastor Zach. Don't worry. The bun will be coming back. It'll make a comeback. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Good morning. What better place to spend Christmas Day than at church? Am I right? The title of our message this morning is It's All About Jesus. So would you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Turn and say, neighbor. It's all about Jesus. All right, I saw some of your guys' neighbors. They were stuck up. They didn't care what you had to say to them. They ignored you. They didn't talk back to you. So turn to your other neighbor and say, other neighbor. I may be choosing you second, but I want you to know it's all about Jesus. All right, it's all about Jesus, and if you're taking notes this morning because note takers are world changers, the first point today is it's all about Jesus in our seeking, in our seeking. If you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 2. You can follow along on the screen if you don't have that with you this morning. Matthew 2, 1 through 2, and 10 through 11 says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Verse 10, When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we see the story of Jesus' birth. We see that there's these wise men, and they begin to seek Jesus, and they bring him gifts. I love that they bring him things that they, they that they're bringing things that they value to a person that they value. Uh, in, in the world, there's something that's similar with every single person. Every person has this uh, in common, that we seek after things that we value. So who here values family? You value family? So if you value family, you're going to seek after your family. You're going to spend time with them. Who's spending time with family today? You, you spend time with your family. You seek after them. You go uh, on vacations with them. You look them up on Facebook and Facebook stalk your family to see what they're doing with their life. If you, if you value something, you're seeking them. If you value sports, you're going to watch sports on TV. You're going to play sports. You're going to pick a team. You're going to cheer for that team. You're going to do whatever it takes because you value that. And in America, we have this thing that we all value that is very similar Uh, this little green piece of paper called money, right? We value this thing called money, and we we sell things online so we can get money. We work uh, a lot so that we can have more money, and we spend this money, this thing that we value, on other things that we value. So you value uh, your kids. Who here values your kids? And who knows kids? You know, you value your kids, and your kids take up a lot of money. Or you value... uh, you value sports or your family and your family takes up more money and, and you got cars and you need a nice car and car takes up money and you need a house and it just money, 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 we value money, right? Money's a thing that we value. <laughs> he's, he's trying to get hit. Hey, I'm watching you. See, value money. But we value money. And if, if, as humans, if we seek after what we value, then as Christians, who, yes, are still humans, if, if, as, as Christ, or if as humans we seek after what we value, then as Christians, we should be seeking after Jesus. Right? If that's, if that's our value, if our value is Jesus, then we should be seeking after Jesus. We should be spending time with him alone, coming into church together with him. We should be doing everything to go after Jesus, to get closer to Jesus. I love that the wise men that they're out, they're far away, and they give up, every, they give up where they're at. And they, they do whatever it takes to get to Jesus. They, they couldn't get to Jesus if they just stayed where they were, right? If they stayed where they were, they'd just be in some field looking at a star. But no, they gave up where they're at. And sometimes that's got to be us. Sometimes we're stuck in a place, and we can't get to Jesus unless we move. We can't get to Jesus unless we change something. It's kind of like this motion-activated faith. If I went to Target last night to do some late Christmas shopping because I forgot to get uh, presents for someone, I'm going to go to Target, and I'm going to walk up, and it's going to look closed because the doors are closed, right? They don't just keep their doors open. And I walk up to the door, and I'm like, oh, it's closed. And I take one step closer, and the door opens for me. And I walk in. And then I go to the bathroom, and, and instead I go to flush, and when, they, when I go to flush, it just flushes for me all of a sudden when I move. And then I go to wash my hands, and there's nowhere to turn on the water, so I stick my hands underneath, and all of a sudden, the water starts coming out. And I need to dry my hands, and I go over, there's no paper towels until I move my hand in front, and then paper towels start coming. When we move, that's when God can do something. Sometimes you've got to take a step from where you're at in order to, to find God, in order to get to God into that place 
So where's that spot that you're at? Maybe today you need to move like the wise men moved. So they move and they do whatever it takes to get to him. And when they get to him, they, sh they show up and they first bow down and they worship him. And then they give him their gifts. This is things that us as Christians we need to do. When we encounter Jesus, we need to bow down and worship and bring him our gifts. But many people only do one of these two things. They come in and they worship and they bow down, but when it's time to give, it's hard to hold on to, it's hard to give this because we value this and we kind of just keep it for ourselves. But that, that's, like, that's like this relationship of all talk and no walk, where you're, you're talking and you're worshiping and showing it, but you won't, your heart isn't in the right spot. And then you have the reverse, where people come in and they'll give money, 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 but then it's hard for them to worship as if you think that you can buy your way into heaven. But let me tell you today, you need both. Both are needed, worship and giving. So in just a few moments, just as, as the wise men did, we're gonna give you and your family a chance to step forward and seeking after Jesus, saying, I'm gonna, I value Jesus more than riches and gold. So Christmas is all about fill in the blank. Okay, everybody participate here. Don't go to sleep. Christmas is all about and Christmas is all about Jesus in our, in, in our seeking. Pastor Zach just gave us that, that little lesson. But Christmas is also all about Jesus in our living. In our living. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. And this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Of course, this morning, we're not talking about physical light and physical darkness. We're talking about spiritual darkness and spiritual light. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light that shone into the darkness. You know, you can go into a room that has no windows and you can close the door behind you and it's gonna be very dark. 
In fact, so dark that you could put your hand in front of your face and you wouldn't even see it. But if you light a candle or if you turn on a flashlight, the darkness is dispelled and that room becomes light. If you think about it, there's nothing that you can take into a lighted room that's going to eliminate the light. Jesus is the light of the world. Darkness is simply absence of light. And if Christmas is all about Jesus in our living, then we need to live in the light as he is in the light. He wants to live in us. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Jesus said, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. And in just a few moments, we're going to ask you, as you and your family, uh, to step forward as a family and say together as a family, we want to live fully in the light of Jesus Christ, in righteousness, in truth and obedience, free from the darkness of any sin. So, uh, everybody say Christmas. It's all about Jesus. Seeking him and valuing him and putting him first, bowing down as the wise men, worshiping him, bringing your gifts to God and honoring him, and don't making it just cheap talk, but bringing your tithes and offerings to worship God and put him first, like the wise men who valued Jesus above everything. And it's about living, not living in a shade of gray, as many Christians that call themselves Christians, they are partly knowing about the light, but they've never really come out of darkness, and they're lukewarm, and they're just mediocre, and, 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 and God wants all of it. He wants to free you from any speck of darkness and bring you in the full light. And I'm telling you that Jesus came to give you the power to be the sons of God, to bring this light, to bring this truth, to bring this love, to bring salvation, and to give you the greatest gift ever. You've been noticing this gift up here? Vanna and my assistant, Austin, would y'all come? Zach and, well, Zach's up here, isn't he? Uh, you go ahead, the Hill brothers. The Hill brothers are coming. We're going to unveil this gift is for all of you. It's for every one of you. It's a gift that keeps on giving. You know, it's, it's Christmas, really. Here it is. It is the Christmas cross. We think of the cross on Good Friday. We think of the cross on Easter. But this is a Christmas cross. For the Bible says Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He was born that he might die. He got on that cross when he came into the darkness and lostness of this world. He came in a light. And the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, and I'm going to read it off the screen with you. It says that, it says this. Is it frozen up? It's frozen up. Okay. Philippians chapter 2, I, I, can, I can quote it, I think. It says, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And he hum took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. He became a man. And being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He became a man to go to the cross as a gift to you, for it is here that he paid for my sin and your sin when he went to the cross. And God, therefore, because of what Jesus did coming to earth and becoming a man and going to the cross, hath highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every other name, both 
in of the things in heaven, the things of earth and under the earth, the name of Jesus, that every knee would bow before him and uh, that every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says in Romans 10, if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord, not just Jesus as the Christmas Jesus or the Easter Jesus, but your personal Lord. It's not the belief about him there and all that he did and that's historically accurate, but it's the Jesus in your heart that you confess, that you make him Lord, the ruler of your life. And so the cross that he gives, gives forgiveness and pardon for you. This Christmas cross, Jesus got on it and he died for you. And not only is Christmas all about Jesus, that we should seek him and live for him, but listen, here's the third point, to die for him. You gotta be willing to die because the cross demands that we, demands our all, our life, everything, it demands it all. And listen to me, parents. This is something that just becomes such a revelation to me as a pastor. As a parent, I want to protect my children from hurt. I don't want them to suffer pain that Jesus suffered on the cross. But we are called and our children are called to lives to be on the cross. So if some teacher treats our kid unfair, some a school buddy treats them unfair. Someone does something to hurt our little baby boy or baby girl, mama, papa, bear. They rise up to fight for them and they teach them, they teach them to defend themselves, to stand up for themselves and that no one has a right to treat them that way. But I don't think Jesus taught us that way. I think it was Jesus that said in scripture that if if uh, someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone asks for your shirt, uh, uh, give them your coat too. If someone uh, uh, needs to borrow from you, give it to them. If someone offends you, forgive them. If someone, uh, if you, you know, the scripture says to, to, uh, to love, love your friends and hate your enemies, but Jesus said to love your enemies and pray for those who use you. And Jesus said they so persecuted the prophets that were before you, if you're persecuted, if people do things that Against you, rejoicing, be exceeding glad, so they because they also persecuted their prophets before you. And he said this: He said, They hated me. Don't be surprised if they don't hate you. Let me tell you something. Life is a life of hurt. And as a pastor, I feel hurt sometimes. And sometimes, quite honestly, I just kind of want to get in the car and go. When people that I prayed for, I've given my life, I've cared about them, and all of a sudden, for some reason, I don't understand. It's almost like there's this equation. The more you give of yourself to someone, the more open you are to be hurt. And the enemy knows that because you pour it out, and then you just feel like they're just sticking you right in the back. But I learned something. We're to be Jesus. We're to get on the cross, and we're to forgive Jesus said, forgive. We're not to hold grudges. We're, we're to go the extra mile. And we're not to protect our kids. We need to teach them what Jesus said and let them get on the cross and teach them it sometimes hurts to forgive, to turn the other cheek, to go the extra mile. It sometimes hurts to do that. But we're, Jesus was called to the cross to give us life and we become in fellowship with him when he's died for us, when we lay down our life for him and get on this cross. And that means we take another nail for Jesus and Jesus said not a word, but he said forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. That's the heart of Christmas. That's what Jesus came to do. He said, if you love your life, you'll lose it in the end. That's the words of Jesus. He said, to deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow me. That's the words of Jesus. So I ask you today, are you living the life on the cross? Have you come to the cross? Are you daily going to the cross, dying to yourself? Are you willing that when evil people do evil to you to love them and do good back to them? That's what Jesus taught, isn't it? Not to defend yourself and get defensive and get hurt and get angry and hate teachers and hate neighbors and hate friends and hate whoever that may have hurt you or your precious little children. We're actually teaching them wrong. We're teaching them to be oversensitive and childish and immature when we teach them and we, we throw fits in front of them about people that have hurt our kids instead of saying, you know what? It happens to all of us. What do we call them to do? Get on the cross. It hurts. Go ahead and put another nail in. I love you anyway. That's the call of the cross. That's what Jesus is calling us to.